What is up? It's the Figure Hunter. This is the second review being released at the same time in a four-part review series on some physiological changes that I have had or undergone, the DEXA scan and how it has helped me to evaluate those changes in a Zozo fit suit, um, you know, coming out in the next couple of days, along with some of the diet changes I actually went through a video just specifically on that. So what this video is itself, alongside the other one released at the exact same time, is that this is the DEXA scan technician's full comprehensive overview of the entire DEXA scan report. So you can see the full on details of what a DEXA scan will entail. If you are new to the channel, I try to do three things. One is test devices for the purpose of CrossFit tracking or high intensity interval training, but more specifically looking at wellness and recovery and training load over time. Two, I try to take an objective and comparison review to be able to like test a device. And if it says it has a feature, I don't want to just tell you what that feature is, but I want to compare that feature to if it's worth its you know weight in gold compared to other features that are like it on the market. And three, these videos are just no frills. There's nothing fancy, you know, fancy background soundtrack. So I'm really trying to focus on the quality of the content being relayed. So in this video today, again, part of a four part series. So two coming out today. One is like the overview of the DEXA scan, sort of a quick sort of like content summary of what a DEXA scan is. The second video is this one, which is just the technician's report. And he's been doing it for a long time of the full DEXA scan report. That's what this video is. We're going to dive into it in a second. Three is going to be like the ZozoFit follow-up using ZozoFit as a monthly tracker of physiological process. And four is the diet changes that I personally did, diet and exercise, fitness, health, overall changes in order to, you know, I basically have been able to see eight and a half pounds of fat loss, two and a half pounds of, or 2.1 pounds of muscle gain, as well as a bone density increase across the last two months. So it's pretty uh, dramatic changes in all positives. So with that, let's dive into the technician's comprehensive explanation of a full Dexican, DEXA scan report. All right. So as you can see with their follow-up here, um, uh, again, if you remember with the body fat percentages, the one on this page is without the skeleton. So uh, again, uh, this is what we think is probably more accurate in terms of risk to your health. Um, so again, we'll have your official one here, one but here. yeah, we always just want to remind people that because they'll see it. It's actually going to be a little bit lower than that. Um, you can see here, looking at the images, it's, it's kind of hard on this one. That's why I like the next uh, graphic image. We'll show you it's a little bit better. But you can see that some of these yellows, especially on the hips, uh, are starting to disappear. So that's a good indication of fat uh, dropping off. And that's the big thing. What was the big combination change? So overall, the machine saw a 6.4 pound loss. And in that 6.4 pound loss, it saw an 8.5 pound loss of pure fat. It saw a 2.1 pound increase in lean tissue. And so that is absolutely what we love to see. We actually uh, jokingly refer to that as the V for victory because you get this uh, V shape right here. Um, but that is excellent. We love it when people have it dialed in because now again, uh, not only are you losing the fat, you're putting on the muscle, but you really have that diet kind of dialed in in terms of uh, mo uh, maximizing your effort. Um, so love to see that information there. Um, just, you know, as a follow up to, I'll remind you, you know, I'm sure, you know, you're working hard with your proteins, but again, uh, our, uh, uh, recommendation for protein would be adding your lean mass to your bone mineral content. Okay. Um, so if you're not doing that, you can kind of compare it and see how it works out with what that's you're doing right, right yeah, now. So I'm doing 175. So, so, oh yeah. Oh yeah. So you're much more than that. So that's perfect. Love to see that. Um, the first page that we have here, uh, analysis change, you see that your body fat percentage dropped from 17.5 to 13.5%. Uh, that is great. As a matter of fact, now when we look at our centiles, and just as a refresher, your centiles are an age, sex, and ethnic specific ranking. Um, it now shows you that your body fat percentage is higher than 0% of your peers. So on average, uh, for your age, sex, and ethnicity, you have the lowest body fat percentage on average uh, with your peer groups. So love to see that. Uh, your 2.9 standard deviations below average, which is great. You want to be an outlier on this one. Um, so you're doing wonderful there. Your uh, Interesting enough, your limbs lean mass index, uh, this is the portion of your BMI that is arm and leg muscle tissue. Uh, you'll also see it referred to as appendicular okay. lean mass index. Okay, muscle tissue. And so, 
Yep, and interestingly enough, we did see it looks like a tiny drop here. Um, even though you saw an overall lean increase, uh, you went from 10.48 to 10.37. So just one-tenth of a uh, kilogram per meter squared or one-tenth of a BMI point. Um, uh, still, you're way uh, above your uh, percentage-wise, your peers, 95%, 1.6 standard deviation average, or your 1.6 uh, standard, devi standard deviations, yeah. And then with the, uh, again, this ratio really should say portion of. Generally for men that are not doing like long distance running, high end cardio and no weight lifting, uh, experts like to see this number over about 8.5 for men. So like I said, you're doing phenomenally well on that. Um, so again, a 10th loss there. So again, it must be more in the trunk that we see the increase and we'll take a look in just a second. Um, again, bone mineral content, that should roughly stay about the same, and it does, 3,400 grams. And then your bone mineral density, uh, we're gonna take another look at this on another page because again, it's so important. And we'll see that through your process here, you actually, uh, you actually gained eight, uh, eight tenths of a, a percent increase in your overall bone density. Um, so that's actually kind of a good move because what happens usually when we see people lose weight, you're not carrying around a specific amount of weight anymore. And remember, one of the things that helps bone density out is load-bearing exercises. So the fact that you increase bone density while losing weight again uh, just shows that you're working out and uh, weight training really paying off. Again, when we look at your spine, we see your spine at 1.345, the legs at 1.515. Um, again, remember this is a screening, so it's not guaranteed. And uh, you know, these are just rough correlation numbers I used from when I used to do bone density scans. We tried to find something that was a good set point for people so that we would know that, hey, uh, you know, maybe you need to talk to your doctor or, or not. But at 1.3, that's well above the 1.15 I like to see. And then for the legs over the 1.2. And sometimes, like I said, you probably won't find that out in literature. This was just from research that we kind of did in-house. Um, when we used to do bone density scans. Uh, however, like I said, our medical director retired, so we just do the body composition now. Um, looking at the uh, skeleton, again, you know, nothing changed, shouldn't have. Uh, the darker the bone on here, the more dense it is. But the good thing is if we look here, you can see that your body fat percentage map has almost uh, no red. There's just one little speck there. That's just probably where we moved over a little bit. Um, so again, all the body fat percentages are staying well in that green area, which means under 25%, a little bit of yellows, which are 25 to 60. Um, but again, uh, again, doing excellent there, doing very, very good. Like I said, that is excellent. Uh, when we look at our adipose page, when we look at the fat, uh, we're going to see here that uh, you drop down, and on this one page, the new data is on the bottom. Okay. Um, on this one, we see you went from 33.6 to 25.1 pounds of pure fat. Um, so that's every fat cell in your body that we saw. Uh, but again, as always, we're always interested in where the adipose or android fat is because that's the most dangerous. And so the two, the two that we have here on follow-up, again, the android to gynoid or waist to hip body fat percentage ratio, you actually did very well for a man to begin with at 0.96. You've dropped it to 0.63, which is wonderful. We like it for men to be under 0.95. Uh, so the fact that you're continuing to drop that is excellent. I'll be honest with you, 90% of the men that come through here can't get under one. Uh, so the fact that you're doing that is excellent. Um, and as a matter of fact, you can see right now, your waist is now at 10.7% body fat. Uh, my guess is, is that you're showing an ab or two <laughs> at that point. Yeah. Uh, so really, really good to see that. Oh, that's cool. And then, yeah, usually we see it about starting at 14%. So at 10, yeah, that's great. Um, the big thing that we're referencing on here is, uh, again, metabolic disease risk. So because, again, you're well under 0.95 um, from this statistic, it, it definitely lowers metabolic uh, disease risk. Now, the interesting thing is we did see a slight bump in your visceral adipose tissue. Um, again, that's that dangerous fat that's in red here that's uh, underneath your abdominal muscle directly surrounding your organs that is also metabolically active. So again, uh, we don't want to see a lot there. It only went up a tenth of a pound from 0.77 to 0.87. Uh, so the volume went from 22.5 to 25.5. Here's the thing, a lot of times people hit a set point and then they just kind of yo-yo back a little bit. Um, the stat that we want to see you under for this one is 52. So you are well under what's considered a healthy metric. So that's great. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I'm not overly concerned about it. You know, if you get another scan in like, you know, six months, year, what have you, if it continues to go up, we'll maybe eyeball and see why. But overall, I'm not worried about that whatsoever. And again, that greatly uh, means that you've reduced your risk for heart disease, heart attack, stroke, diabetes, high blood pressure, and even certain forms of cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, so love to see that. Cool. Again, one of the things I tell people to remember is this, the 0.63 here that you see at your new waist. 
uh, to hip ratio. And then now, again, we just look at the overall trunk versus legs. Uh, we see that's dropped. Uh, you went from uh, the trunk having a 14% higher body fat percentage to, interestingly enough, a 14% lower body fat percentage wow. than the legs. Uh, so that is a significant change. Generally, we like to see it at one or below. Um, actual fat in the trunk that we see here. Uh, again, this is uh, uh, looking at the actual fat in the trunk versus the arms and legs. Uh, we can see that you had 18% more actual fat last time. This time you have 11% more fat in the arms and legs. Uh, we like this under one, so you're doing excellent as well. And as a matter of fact, you can see both your centaurs dropped uh, significantly. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So both of those doing very, very well. We love to see that. Again, this is another number that a vast majority of men have a very difficult time getting below, so that's excellent. Great. Um, when we look at the actual BMI breakdown, again, BMI a terrible tool by itself, but uh, when we break it down, much more uh, effective tool. You were already at a healthy level last time at 4.89, but you've dropped the fat mass index of your BMI down to 3.65. Uh, I know it says ratio here. Again, it really should say portion of. Um, we'd love to see men between three and six. Okay. So you are at a very healthy level of fat. Love to see that. Um, lean tissue wise, the fact that you've raised your lean while dropping fat, uh, again, significant, not only showing that your uh, exercise program is working, but your diet is dialed in. And you notice here that, uh, again, with the lean mass index, uh, also called FFMI or fat-free mass index, mm -hmm. Um, you'll notice that it went up three-tenths of a BMI point or three-tenths of a kilogram per uh, meter square. Um, and we saw that the legs dropped 0.1. So that means you had a 0.4% increase in the trunk. Mm. Um, so most of the increase that we saw uh, through this uh, is in the trunk area. So that's kind of interesting. Mm. Um, you went from better than 92 to 94% of your peers. Generally, over about 18 to 18.5 uh, is what experts like to see uh, males that work out at. Um, and the fact that you're uh, really above that, you're nailing that. So like I said, everything's looking great there. Love to see it. Um, last sheet that we have here, uh, again, if you'll recall, uh, if you'll remember, this is just yeah. a bigger breakdown of your body. Just remember the tissue body fat percentage without the skeleton, the regional body fat percentage with the skeleton. Uh, but what we notice on here is just your resting metabolic rate. Uh, you can see it is now 1852. Uh, and uh, just last time when you were in, uh, your resting metabolic rate will have been at 1,833. So you can see how you've added just a little more muscle and so it's added a few more calories there for you. Um, and remember, our resting metabolic rate is the estimated amount of calories you need to consume to maintain lean tissue every 24 hours uh, at rest. So again, this is kind of an end of the day number, not a beginning of the day number. Uh, or another way to look at it is, is that this is what your body needs to sustain the lean tissue you have daily. Mm -hmm. And so the more calories you burn, the more you probably want to consume above that so that you make sure that your body is burning the uh, fat, not your lean tissue. Okay, great. So that's the breakdown. There you have it. That's the summary of the full DEXA scan. So make sure you watch all four videos. You know, there's the summary review of like what the DEXA scan is, just more in concepts. And then in the next couple of days, there'll be the Zozo Fit, sort of using that as a monthly tracker of physiological change as well as the diet changes that I personally incorporated that helped me to see progress that I feel like really, I feel good about the progress that I've made. So that's the, this is the comprehensive DEXA scan report breakdown, the figure hunter. Thanks so much for watching.